Hey everybody, welcome to TIW Podcast. I'm Eric, and today I watched WWE Smackdown episode 1073 and 205 Live episode 170, both broadcast on Friday the 13th, March 13th, 2020. Um, before I get into talking about this very, very different episode, but also pretty awesome, I, I enjoyed this episode so much. Um, but before that, I have to mention, because I was reminded during 205 Live, I completely forgot to talk about an incident that happened on NXT this week. So earlier this week on NXT, we had the match... Uh, it was Raul Mendoza versus... Oh, I forget who he was fighting. But whoever he was fighting uh, beat him, I think. Um, and Raul Mendoza, uh, it, it segued out of another... Something else was happening. And then the cameras are like, oh, what's going on? And we see uh, there outside of the building that Raul Mendoza is abducted by a couple of people in uh, lucha masks and suits. I think they're in suits. Um, And I don't know how I missed that when I was watching it first because I saw people talking about it. Then I watched the clip. How did I miss that? And then I totally forgot to talk about it. And then I wrote it in big letters at the top of my page of notes. uh, Forgot Mendoza's abduction. So I'm (laughs) I'm actually really excited to see where that goes. Um, Who are these two guys? Who are the the masked individuals who who who? I mean, I, I think that's a f- felony, right? Kidnapping is a fel. I don't know if kidnapping is the the legal term for it. Abduction. That's what I. That's what I mean. I wrote the I wrote the word abduction right there. Um, but anyway, we'll see what happens with all that. Um, lots of ideas of who 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 those two people are, and I. <laughs> I really hope that this all ties in to the Lucha War that's already happening over there on Raw. Um, that it's all part of the, this whole thing that this 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 little pocket universe within the WWE universe just like keeps building and building. I would love that, but we'll see what happens with it, all that. Okay, so uh, due to all the stuff that's going on, I talked about all this stuff so much uh, two episodes ago. I don't want to keep on going on and on about it, except for wash your hands, stay at home uh, as much as you can. Don't go out if you don't have to, and uh, just stay safe and be uh, try to be happy. Watch really fun stuff. Listen to really fun stuff. Um, I think it's really it's really easy to 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 fall into a spiral of of thinking about all the negative things that are going on. Um, and tonight's episode of SmackDown, I thought it was a really really positive thing. Um, I think it's so awesome. Uh, that they still uh, put on a show and um, they put the, they they did it in a manner that uh, minimizes as much risk of contact with other people as possible I mean with if, with it being wrestling there's going to be a person-to-person contact that's unavoidable but as far as like crew and fans and all of that I thought they did an excellent job of of uh, taking care of that. So uh, tonight was supposed to uh, be broadcast from Detroit, but um, Detroit canceled all uh, uh, all gatherings, all social gatherings, all events of uh, with more than 250 people, I think. Um, they might have had a different, like, that's the general thing that I've seen going around town to town or whatever, that 250 people that's like the the maximum number um so i i don't know if it's exactly that for detroit necessarily but they they couldn't do the they couldn't broadcast live from the arena um and so they changed changed it up went over the performance center they already had a lot of stuff already there to have been set up for uh this past wednesday and i thought it looked great they had all the seats out still and they did put up like their the SmackDown barriers as opposed to just the regular NXT barriers, um, and stuff like that. So it did have the SmackDown look to it, um, but I thought it was like there weren't any, there wasn't anybody in the in the chairs, 
So there wasn't really any need for them to have the chairs, but I, I still appreciate that they had them there. It, it looked, it, it looked cool. Um, and it did look better than if they just had a black curtain in the back for sure. But I was thinking uh, if they do, if they end up doing WrestleMania and broadcasting it from the performance center, like tonight, um, they could bring in that huge display screen. They're probably going to use a huge display screen this year anyway, just use that. Just put that in the back of the room and then have a digital audience, a simulated digital audience in there. And they, it'd be so weird, but I enjoy it. And at some point, someone would get thrown through it and it would be straight. And then the rest of the night is just silent. No crowd reactions at all because the, they, they, be, they would be killed. It would be the first time that the audience was actually um, taken out of the picture during, during a pay-per-view. But anyway, all right, so let's talk about this this show. I, it was really fun. Uh, we had Triple H introduce us to the, the Performance Center, t- telling us like how, gr- how great it is, and it does seem pretty great. Um, and then we head on down to the ring, which is just like 10 feet away from where he was. He was up on the perch that was uh, has been re- reassembled since Wednesday night. Um but we have Michael Cole and Triple H on commentary for it turns out for the whole night. Um, I guess apparently it seemed like he was only supposed to be on there for uh, Triple H was only supposed to be on there for the first match, but um, he was on there the whole night. And it was really fun. Um, he kept making fun of Michael Cole, kept making fun of the situation. Um, just the, just really quick jokes here and there. It, I think if there wasn't, if it wasn't for that, this show wouldn't have worked nearly as well as it did. Um, but we opened up with Sasha Banks and Bailey versus Nikki Cross and Alexa. They mentioned that uh, Nikki and Alexa called out the Kabuki Warriors last week because uh, they're saying, "Hey, you're supposed to defend on all brands, so we challenge you." And it was like it's a super quick thing. Um, so Paige was not able to uh, to travel out uh, to make it to the show uh, tonight, so they did announce that. Um, but uh, when Nikki and Alexa come out, Nikki is like, she like interrupts Alexa. She's like cutting her promo, and she's like, we're looking for a fight. And then she looks over at Alexa, and is like, uh, right, we are, right? <laughs> I really like that. But um, anyway, the match takes place, and it got, I, I got to thinking, well, I've – I, I have to assume that during these commercial breaks that they're just like standing around and talking about TV or whatever. Um, and uh, wherever, whatever part of the world that broadcasts that feed during the commercial breaks, I guess, um, they, uh, they, they were doing exact, well, I don't know if they were talking about TV shows, but uh, they did not continue the match during a commercial break because of course, why would you? Like, there's no point in in wrestling if literally nobody is seeing it like don't risk getting hurt for something that's not being broadcast so anyway i i did enjoy that i enjoyed so much about this this show um so uh sasha wins the match after there's after uh there's a uh, distraction when oscar attacks alexa so Alexa is uh is not the legal opponent, um, but she gets attacked by Asuka, and uh, that distracts Nikki. She's concerned about it, and also Alexa is not able to save, us uh save Nikki from um, from the bank statement. So Nikki does tap out, and we have uh, a victory for Sasha and Bailey, and further setting things up for Alexa and Nikki versus the Kabuki Warriors. That's gonna be good wherever whenever it happens um then we had an interview with roman reigns uh he was addressing the criticism of him just getting a main event match against goldberg and he says basically the the gist of his argument or his reply to that is that if i main event every night throughout the year then why don't i deserve to to main event at the biggest show of the year and I say that's a, that's a very fair point, but it's also Baron Corbin could say the same thing because I think most of the main events have been Roman Reigns versus Baron Corbin. So 
<laughs> it should be Baron Corbin versus Goldberg. What are we do- what are we doing over here? No, it shouldn't be. <laughs> uh, Roman Reigns has de- defeated Bar- Baron Corbin like every time almost. Um, then we have Sammy. Uh, let's see. Oh, the Sammy gang uh, is bumped. There, uh, there, they, there's a, a better uh, guest for uh, Dasha. Is it Dasha? I'm trying to think of. No, it's Kayla. Dasha, she's she hasn't been around in a long time. Um, oh, earlier today, I went to get some food after I, I picked up new glasses. I'm really excited. I like them a lot. It's taken some getting used to because of the difference. Like, I can actually see. So my eyes were like, what's going on? <laughs> but I went to get some food afterwards because I was already out. Um, and uh, there's a local place. They have pig wings. It's really good. I think I forgot. I forget what the, the place is called, but it's next to the it's next to the Regal um, or the United uh, Artists Theater uh, here in, in Lone Tree. Um, but uh, they, they had ESPN on. And I remember a couple of days or maybe like yesterday, they were saying that Charlie Caruso has been uh, one of the panelists on one of the shows. And then I see her on the TV, the sounds off and all that. I was like, oh, that's cool. Good for her. Um, but anyway, what was I saying? Where did I leave off in my notes? Um, oh, uh, D- D- Kayla's, oh, I wrote, I even wrote Dasha. What an idiot. Um, me, not, not Dasha or Kayla. So Kayla's guest is actually Jeff Hardy because he's made his return and Jeff Hardy is interrupted by Baron Corbin. Um, and we see, we, we, this develops into a match between them that we'll see later in the night. And then Elias interrupts Corbin as he's being upset about that. And he goes to, to, to start singing a song, but Corbin says, I don't have time for this. I have this stuff. Um, so up next, we had a replay of the tag team title match at the elimination chamber. So that six tag team match in the chamber. Um, and then triple H is also back <laughs> on commentary and he, he, he says, like, I, I was gone for like a minute and the internet uh, demanded that I come back and save the show and all that. So for the entire rest of the show, he's just giving crap. He was already giving crap to Michael Cole in the first part, but it it just gets worse and worse and funnier and funnier throughout the rest of the show. Uh, we get the announcement that uh, Rob Gronkowski, the Gronk, uh, is in talks uh, that all the rumors are true apparently except they're not because he hasn't signed anything specifically or whatever he's going to be on the show next week and we'll learn more about that then and uh mojo raleigh delivers that news because he's friends with him um okay so uh oh when did this develop it was i didn't write down when this uh happened but we had Okay, we had Daniel Bryan approach. Where did I write that down? Oh, oh, I didn't write down when that happened. Anyway, uh, earlier in the show, Daniel Bryan approaches Drew Gulak and says, hey, I didn't believe you when you said you knew my weaknesses, but you kept countering everything. What would you be willing to teach me? And then the Sammy game, Sammy gang comes and, uh, uh, the, you know, they're doing their thing, just talking crap to, to Daniel Bryan. And they're like, who, who even is this guy? He's a nobody. And so, uh, Cesaro stops, uh, Daniel Bryan from confronting Sammy Zayn and Daniel Bryan's like, my problem's not with you. It's with him. And then da- Cesaro says, if you have a problem with me, or if you have a problem with him, then you have a problem with me. And so that, that sets up this having this match, which was very good. It was a lot shorter than I would have liked, but we did get this, this tremendous pop-up uppercut. Which is, that was probably my favorite part of the match. But uh, Daniel Bryan wins via roll-up. Uh, and then Shinsuke Nakamura, who was out there, and also Sami Zayn, who was on commentary for this match, uh, they attack, uh, and Drew steps in. So Drew and, Drew and uh, Daniel are friends now, so that's great. Um, he steps in and saves Daniel Bryan from from the attack, and so uh, this this uh, 
conflict continues. Uh, sh- uh, and Ron Strowman is not involved in any way at at this point. We'll see how that develops as well. Um, then we had Baron Corbin versus Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy won via Swanton Bomb um, after hitting uh, uh, a twist of fate, which <laughs> which was for some reason uh, Michael Cole called it a twist of fury. I I I thought I was having a stroke for a second. I was like, wait, that's not what it's called. Am I did I transfer into an alternate universe? Is it actually called the Twist of Fury all this time? And uh, it, but I it, it, I'm from the other universe. So it was called Twist of Fate. No, you just made a mistake. But <laughs> yeah, Jeff Hardy wins his uh his his re debut or his return match. So that's pretty exciting. And then our final segment of the night. Okay, and <laughs> before I hear that uh all these moments were triple h he kept cracking jokes about everything um but we had him uh take control of one of the cameras and michael Cole's like what are you doing he's like i'm shorthanded i'm ha- we're shorthanded I- i'm helping out <laughs> that was really great and then um i think it was after this match um or or, or actually i think it was after cesaro versus dana bryan uh he was he was like when we come back from commercial he was like touching up he had one of those makeup pads the sponges he's touching up michael cole's makeup and then he pulls out a sharpie and like starts filling in the gray hairs on his uh on his chin (laughs) so dumb but i really really enjoyed it and then our final segment of the evening we had john cena interviewed by michael cole and he tries to explain why did bray wyatt fall and he says, oh, because he got lazy. He gave up. He blamed me. And that's what happens when people fail here. It's because they get lazy. They give up and they blame everybody except themselves. And he says that he accepted the challenge from Bray Wyatt because he because he thinks, why give anybody a fifth or a sixth chance? He wants to take Bray Wyatt out of the equation because he keep, he thinks he keeps getting too many chances so uh ray wyatt appears he says ah you're really mean and hateful but it's great to see you john um and he says that uh uh, john cena he fiends for the spotlight and that uh the fiend helped him put himself back together and it's a good thing and uh because he was uh, having so much trouble he had all these voices in his, his head and he finally started listening to voices and one of those voices is the fiend i that's what i gathered from it um and he tells john that their match is going to be a slaughter and he insists that john lets him in so i i thought it was a really good segment i enjoyed it and um a little bit disappointed that they didn't have a firefly fun house like an actual fun house segment but having him there in person he like just pops up from behind the the barricade well we don't see him pop up from there but like the camera like just barely reveals that he's there in the audience and i enjoyed that um there what else was there that involved there being no audience there any time that people <laughs> that they were doing stuff that usually is like to get the audience to start clapping or stuff like that it was really, really funny. Um, and then we also had after the uh, replay of the elimination chamber, we had Miz and Morrison come out and cut a promo and they were doing all of that crowd work type stuff for nobody, which was hilarious. And, um, uh, and then they also the hypocrisy of them how uh saying oh we don't need catchy chants like new day rocks or ooh so's and then like 30 seconds later they start hey hey ho ho miz and morrison i think with the next time if there are more the, the next time any of us have a chance let's say uh we go hey hey ho ho and then this is like a standard like rally chant or uh, protest chants they say like blah 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 has got to go probably usually like a politician's name or whatever so we, we say Miz and Mo have got to go so hey hey ho ho Miz and Mo have got to go and I think that they might be building up to that like New Day will say that to them or whatever we'll see 
Uh, so yeah, I really like this episode of SmackDown. It's absolutely worth watching. Um, and if you don't have the WWE Network, this is a great chance to watch all of that Elimination Chamber match, which uh, I already talked about my thoughts on it in general um, on that episode earlier this week. Um, that brings us to uh, 205 Live. It was a very short episode. It was only about 30 minutes, but it was just one match, and it was that five-on-five elimination tag team match on one side we had the 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 og 205 live guys we had Arya Devari, brian kendrick the brian kendrick um tony niece jack gallagher and mike canellis and at ringside were the sing brothers and the sing brothers it helped them at one point maybe some other points that i missed but uh they hit uh danny birch with their or some i don't know if they they did but danny birch got hit by their camera um, and so that's that what le- that's what led to their first elimination when Tony Nese pinned Danny Birch. So over on the NXT team, the NXT team, uh, we had Isaiah Swerve Scott, Tyler Breeze, um, Oni Oni Lurkin or uh, Loni Orca, and Danny Birch, and their fifth member, Kushida. I was really excited that he was the fifth member. I don't remember if I, if that was who I guessed would be. Um, I think I, I think I remember guessing it would be Jordan Devlin, but there's no way he gets along with any of these people at all. So I, I was really excited to see Kushida in there. Um, so I, I missed either when Kendrick was eliminated or Daivari was eliminated. I tried to keep track of everything, um but uh th- that first elimination was danny birch and then we had uh jack gallagher eliminated tyler breeze then we had oni lurkin to f- uh eliminate tony niece so niece was the first out for his team um and then oni lurkin also pinned um mike Canellis. uh and then s- i thought that the brian kendrick pinned S- isaiah swerve scott but i guess it was the other way around or something and then Daivari was eliminated at some point after this Jack Gallagher pinned Oni Lorkin and so it came down to Jack versus um Swerve and Kushida uh and Jack was like really just taking it to all of them it was really exciting to watch um but eventually Kushida with Swerve's help so Swerve like did like a pop-up powerbomb setup except it, it it was like a an arm bar power bomb, which th- this, and then that Spanish fly, uh, freaking arm bar. Like <laughs> I, it's, it's so awesome. Um, there's a really great finisher, like a great combo there. And Kushi is great. So, um, team NXT wins the five on five match. Um, and I think it could be argued that they had the advantage with that surprise team member, that they couldn't, the, the other team couldn't have, have uh, the originals couldn't have prepared properly because they didn't know who, know who that fourth, that fifth member was. Um, and I think maybe that could have been counterbalanced, although they didn't know. So I think the teams had been announced already when, uh, before they had to replace, make a replacement for Leo Rush. So they, I guess they could have kicked somebody off of their team. <laughs> And said, oh, we have a surprise fifth member that ends up being the person that they kicked off the team anyway, but it would just keep their keep it balanced as far as surprise opponents go or whatever. I don't know. It was a, it was a great match. Um, and it's only 30 minutes. Check it out. Um, it's on the WWE Network right now, and it'll be on Hulu tomorrow, Saturday the 14th. So totally worth checking out. Uh, no crowd for this either. It's filmed, also filmed in the Performance Center. Um, but I think this is the most people that were in the in the ring in, at any time throughout the entire night. Absolutely. Um, and it might have been more people in this match and at ringside with the Singh brothers than appeared in the entire rest of the show. Actually, I'm going to count this because they have five on five. That's 10 plus the Singh brothers. That's 12. And then we also have the commentary. Uh, let's let's forget about commentary that uh yeah let's include commentary why not um so that's 14 people total as far as wrestlers go um the entire rest of the night we had 
uh, okay, 14, 14. Remember that. Uh, we had Sa- Sasha and Bailey, Nikki and Alexa. That's four. Then we had Asuka appear. That's five. We had Roman, six. Uh, we had Sammy and those. Okay. Uh, uh, there were more people on SmackDown because we had um, we had Sammy, Cesaro, Shinsuke, uh, Drew Gulak, Daniel Bryan. So now we're up to 10. We had uh, we had Mojo Rawley out there, 11. We had uh, Corbin and Hardy, 12, 13. John Cena, 14. And then the commentary, uh, I probably I probably skipped a couple of people, but commentary puts us over uh, to uh, over the uh, how many people were in on 205 Live. So there you go. That's math time on TNM Podcast. But anyway, both really good ep- good episodes. Really interesting. Um, it's been announced that uh, uh, Monday Night Raw will also be from the P- Performance Center, and at least throughout through to the end of April, um, NXT will originate from the Performance Center as well. Um, so yeah, it's 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 going to be really interesting. But I, I'm hopeful that the creativity, they had a lot of fun with this episode. I'm hoping that uh, now that they know more ahead of time than just one day, that they'll start doing more pre-taped stuff, more creative stuff, more uh, creatively risky stuff, just trying weird, interesting ways of doing promos and things like that. Um, and I, I also definitely expect to see a lot of like Skype calls and uh and things like that um and like interviews and especially on raw uh because it has the most time to fill on there so anyway um yeah i'm trying to be i i want to stay really positive about at least the entertainment aspect of it i'll be able to watch the show and enjoy the show and i was really really satisfied with this episode and I'm, i'm i'm looking forward to more um whatever however it, it it goes down going forward so um of course if the whole operation has to be put on hold that's absolutely understandable as well um i thought at least as far as the current situation that the way that they did this show on this night seemed to work um and as long as they they stay on top of it and like monitoring like who if anybody's feeling sick and stuff like that that they, that everybody knows that they can be honest about it and all that um cuz yeah I, if if everybody's like oh I am feeling sick I don't want to get other people sick I can't be on the show tonight can you like figure something else out and all that kind of thing we can come back to it next week or in two weeks or whatever so we'll we'll see how it all goes down. Um, let me know what you thought about these two two episodes by tweeting me at TIW Podcast. Go to TIWpodcast.com for more reviews. If you enjoyed this episode or anything else on the site, please share some links with your friends. Subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, wherever you like to listen. Stay safe, happy, and healthy out there in all the infinite multiverses. And I'll see you next time here on TIW Podcast. Bye.